February 26, 2023. Situation continues. Um, just waiting, really, for status updates as they filter through. I am not in charge. I elected that I didn't want to be in charge. And I'm the younger of the brothers, and um, I'm glad that uh, my older brother is willing to, uh, and seemingly wanting, to uh, sort of just take the lead and uh, do all the talking and communications and finding out things and discussing things and <sighs> coordinating and um, and also being the first uh, point of contact for outside parties to because I don't understand things sometimes very well and I, I didn't know what to do today and without um, I went to work. I didn't exhausted yesterday. Um, you know, I decided to just try to go to sleep, and um, I didn't sleep very well, and I didn't sleep very long. But I, I did lie there and did sleep for a while, and uh, then I woke up and it was. I was like, well, and I didn't know any different, and I knew the situation was just about the same. So I just. Well, you know, go to work and do that, and that'll pass the time. And work is aware, uh, at least the people that need to know, know. And the rest, I don't have to talk to. And they can figure, they can ask other people, and it's like, what's wrong with him? Or I don't know. But just leave me alone and don't talk to me. And if you do talk to me, well, you're going to get what you're going to get. And I can't guarantee it's going to be friendly or nice or civil or even... You know, it's like I might not even look at you or be able to look at you because I don't want that reading and evaluation, that uh, figuring me out look. Like, oh, you know, it's like, no, please don't. So I will avoid catching anybody's eyes. It's like I protect my eyes so I didn't accidentally make contact. And it's like I just keep my head turned down in a way because I don't want people looking. And the more I try to not look, the more evident there is that something's wrong and people keep trying to look it's like so it's like I, i'm not very good at not trying to get attention i get attention anyway and when i'm trying not to get attention i get more attention it's like dang it it's like so but i let the person i work with closely uh, most days i let him know that as soon as he got time for opening it's like i'm gone i don't i'm not going to face the public i'm not going to deal with uh, all the other employees that show up and it's like even after like 5 6 a.m. this morning other employees were starting to show up and it was getting more and more active and there's more and more people just working doing their thing but there are more and more people that you know want to do that uh, chit chat that uh, uh, small talk you know the generic compulsory obligatory good morning how's it going what's new with you you know, it's a great, I don't know. It's like, I just can't. I usually can't. I, and I usually don't want to, but of, it's like, <sighs> the ongoing struggle woes me. But anyway, that's not the point of this. This has already just wandered and meandered all over the place. But uh, based on what I had last heard, and had thought, I thought it was just, you know, she's on life support. And um, that's the only thing keeping her going. After her heart stopped and they got it going again. Um, after such a long period of time, um, the brain um, had suffered uh, significant damage and uh, I my understanding was that there was um, 
exceptionally low chance of any um, responsiveness from that point because she hadn't shown any, you know, where they put the light in your eyes and your pupils are supposed to dilate. And her pupils had not been dilating and there's no mental activity or signs of anything. So, and I thought they were just kind of keeping her alive for anybody that, to give them time, that anybody that wanted to come in hadn't seen her, that hadn't talked to her, that wanted to see her in that state and, you know, consider that good or enough or that they could give people time. And that's like, okay, but not for me. I've already said, I've already said my goodbyes. I've already said, said what I wanted to say. And, and, uh, I have my, uh, I have my piece of it and I don't want to see more. I don't want my final memories of being in that context and narrative. And it's like, that's just not my way. And uh, this is not like the first time. It's like, I, I, I like my last memories and, and I like my living memories. I don't like the last memories to be in hospitals. And, and uh, you know, yeah, I would be if, you know, but she's already gone. He's been gone. So I got home this morning and um, I was making some food and I got a text from my brother and uh, he said that like they had put her in a controlled state of hypothermia down to 36 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday evening to help slow metabolism and prevent damage. And that was in a text message. And I thought I understood, and apparently I didn't understand. And it's just evidence, not of my... Uh, you know, I want to use, it's not evidence of incompetence. It's just my uh, lack of awareness and familiar, familiarity with these sorts of processes. And what is, what happens. So it's evidence of naivety or naivete. And uh, so it's not like, but I did compound my error when I responded as though I thought I knew, because I thought I did, and I even thought about it and looked at it and thought, what does this mean? And I thought it was like, well, it, it means that she has gone. She is now officially gone. And I was like, why didn't he say that? Why didn't he just say that or say it in a more clear way? But I responded as if I, I thought she was gone and I was glad for some finality and, um, you know, I was wondering when the next step was. And I didn't get a response back, but I figured he was just exhausted or didn't want, you know, he had other people to talk to and situations on his own. And uh, but then I, I, you know, I took a nap myself and I woke up and, and just a little bit ago, I got a text from another family member saying that they were with her and uh, she is out of the cooling phase and they're beginning the warming phase and that they've been with her the whole time and they hope that she has some sense or something that people are with her and it's like oh okay well she's she's still a, technically alive and it's like and at this point it's like well i could have been there if i wanted to be there i could have chosen to be there And my choice remains the same. It's like I, I still don't um, have any. It's like I, it would just it wouldn't be good. It might be good for the living, other family members that would be there, the ones that are there right now. It might be good for them to see me. 
but uh, it was, you know, and it's selfish, you know, because it wouldn't serve or it wouldn't uh, help me, you know. So it's like, well, it's not good for me, so I'm not going to do it. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's about me. It's because I'm not going to go. And, but it's not. I, you know, my brother, he tried to let me know that it was okay, that I just do whatever it is I want to do, what's good for me, and that everybody does things differently. And because um, there is no sign of response, and she is totally um, unaware. And um, and she still has no sign of response. There's no um, evidence of any... Uh, mental activity or awareness or response to stimuli. So it's just, you know, it's, it's for the living's benefit to people that want to see her, see her. And if that's what they want, that's, that, that, that's, that's their choice, not mine. So people can think whatever they want to think. People can believe what they want to believe. All right. And I can choose to feel bad about it if I want to, but it doesn't change anything. Nothing is going to change anything. So whatever guilt or shame or frustration or, you know, it's, it's, that's on me. No one's making me feel anyway. In particular, it's like my choice because I just feel all over the place. And I don't, because I don't know how to feel because So it's like I'm throwing feelings around haphazard, trying to see what'll stick. I've even thrown in there some anger, you know, trying to find some resentment. As though that would, you know, but nothing really changes anything. Just me beating myself up and torturing myself, and that's what my brother said. My neighbor. I'm gonna make sure he gets far enough away that he can't hear me. So, anyway, I think I've gotten past the point where I'm all that <sighs> concerned about uh, privacy matters. The privacy matters, and not anonymity matters, um, family, dignity, respect, honor matters to some degree but not if it's forcing me into some sort of uh, perceived silence where I feel um, I can't talk or do the things that help me actually um, not resolve but process and because everybody does things differently and uh, for me traveling by myself um, to visit the body of somebody that I, um, it's like, and uh, like, it was, it's, it's been hard enough just watching this over the past couple of years and, you know, being on the phone, um, pretty much every week except for the weeks where I just couldn't or didn't want to. And then the couple visits I had, the one back in October, it's like, I'm glad I went. I wasn't happy about it at the time, and, but I can be happy that I went and happy that I was there. And, and it's like, I was the person that, that, you know, was able to do that. And, uh, like, my first visit, um, when I went back out there for the first time since being here, um, in 
2020. It was in the middle of a pandemic at the beginning, and I'm traveling around the country. Um, and it was a surprise visit. Um, I had talked to her on the phone on a Sunday of a vacation week from work, and I had planned in advance. I knew I was going to be on vacation, and I had planned on uh, making a surprise trip back there, and I wasn't going to say anything, and I was just going to show up, and it was going to be a surprise, and so that's what I did. So I, I talked with her on that Sunday, and just a regular Sunday call, and, um, and I guess the next day on that Monday of that vacation week for me in I don't know, was it October? I don't know, there's a video. I'm pretty sure from like, was this before or after I started making videos? I don't know, I think it was before. Maybe, I'm not sure. But, when I got uh, back to that town and I got to the her place and it was already near dusk and I was on the porch and it was kind of the porch lights were not on and I knocked on the door and because I wanted to I didn't want to try a side door that I knew would probably be open um, but um, I just knocked on the front door like a like any other random person might even though it was dusk and you know the lighting was off and she might not be feeling safe but uh, she opened the door and I don't remember if she turned the light on or not, but um, she opened the door and she is just going, she has grown so small, just, you know, kind of compacted and um, over the years. So that wasn't like new, but she's just been growing um, smaller and smaller um, and just more of a hunch to her uh, posture. And um, she opened the door and just kind of stood there and at that time she was able to stand on her own uh, power um not very well but she could stand and she just kind of looked at me at this person out the door and her head kind of tilted she didn't say anything she was like looking at me she had glasses and she was just kind of staring squinted a bit and then she just kind of just slowly recognized and didn't there was no great sign of recognition and, and but it is it just it was just such a shock and she didn't know what to make of it because she was not expecting it and so we had a visit for a few days and it was uh mostly okay it was not good for me and um it was i mean it was it was good for me to be there and it was but it was difficult for me to be there and uh see how things were and how they had become and uh, what had happened since the last time I had been there. My memory, what it told me and uh, how things had changed. And at that time, uh, she was still able to get around and uh, move about well enough that, you know, we went a few places, you know, went out to a restaurant to eat. I took her shopping a little bit. Um, and I remember being a bit frustrated um, by how difficult things were and how much trouble she had and I was like it just and I know she was trying her best and we went to the old um, uh, house and uh, where I spent a lot of my uh, uh, growing up years and we went there and I saw you know the old place and explore just a little bit and uh, and uh, while we were there she fell down and, uh, and she didn't want any help getting back up and so I was just kind of there in that whole process of her managing to right herself and you know that because she's had already at that point been falling quite often quite a bit but she was still able at that time to negotiate um, and uh, 
get herself up, though it took a lot of effort. And uh, so, and that was like over two years ago. And then this last trip in October, this one was more um, planned because she, you know, I told her I was, I told her months in advance that uh, I even gave her an option that I would, I could visit in April of last year or in October. And because uh, I was thinking about visiting my brother up in, 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 in April and she opted for the October visit. And I didn't actually end up going to visit my brother in April last year for reasons. <sighs> but I did um, keep reminding her and letting her know that I'll, and I'll be there in a couple months and I'll be there in a couple weeks. And uh, so when the time came, I was there and I visited and I, you know, stayed in the usual place and, and uh, things were a little bit different this time. I was taking care of things more myself, arranging my own stay and paying for things. And she was uh, in a very uh, she was already just very disoriented at most times and uh, had great, great difficulty um, moving about. And uh, by then her falls were becoming just a regular occurrence. And she had uh, a lot of uh, uh, devices um, for moving about, you know, like one of those little walker things and a cane and sometimes the cane and the walker and and but there were just little transition points where she would still fall and there wouldn't be anybody there um, at those moments and she would just fall and th she would just casually remark about how she was on the ground for eight hours one time and and you know she would have to call people and they would or they would find her and you know it's like oh it was just part of her normal she was just used to it and there's there is no finding solutions for her. And then the whole thing about not wanting to be in assisted living and, and things like that. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, I know things were mentioned and things were suggested, and, but she was just, so that visit went. And I guess the thing for me to feel okay about is that because I was going to be there for two nights and three days and I'd let her know that and she was like you know upset or you know she asked me to stay another day and she seemed it seemed really important to her that I stay another day and I first was like I don't know I don't know I only plan to be here and by the second night I, I, I let her know that it's like okay I'll stay another day so I I, I didn't want because I didn't want my entire vacation week to just be travel. And, uh, but it seemed really important to her. So, and I was like, I, I didn't understand. It's like, I didn't think, it's like, it's like, what's the big deal about an extra day? It would just be more of the same, more of what we had been doing, which was just not much. <laughs> Talking, spending time together just being around, playing the same games that uh, we had used, you know, she always liked to play, and uh, Scrabble, and uh, Gin Rummy, and uh, I, you know, I'd bring food, and we'd get takeout, and she would send me off and do errands, because she didn't really have a reliable person to get to do errands. She had people to run errands for her, but sometimes they would just take the money and then they would, you know, just not come back. Or they would come up with some excuse about what happened. It was always something. And then, you know, it's like, yeah, but what happened to the money? And it's like, oh, well, there was this and I had to pay for that. And it's like, it's still, she still needs groceries. And it's like, oh my gosh. And like, she was putting trust into these people. And, uh, I don't know, they had some sort of, uh, 
understanding or agreement, which I didn't get. The whole thing seemed fairly uh, uh, dubious at best. But she had been relying on them for years, and there must have been some sort of established trust and boundaries and known allowances of I guess they helped her though. They were able to support her choice of lifestyle even though it was not a healthy lifestyle. She didn't want to be removed from that place. And in the end she got her way. You know, she never had to go to stay or live in a nursing home. And now she's just, you know, she, because I'm going off my own experience of what it was like for me, and I don't remember a thing. Of course, for me, I was, uh, it was a totally different situation. And, uh, but my own awareness was gone. For most of it and uh, you know I, I, I had a lot of things working for me at the time you know as far as a physical state so but she doesn't there is no coming back so many problems so many health conditions so many underlying issues um, that are working and had been working against her her body had been uh, rejecting itself the longest time, and her mind had been uh, succumbing. So, none of this is easy for me to talk about. It's just, I'm just telling myself and leaving a record and getting permission from myself to feel okay about how things just are, and that I'd, I have a choice about how to feel about them and how to think about them and how to remember them and it's like I can choose to remember her how I want and in the end that's all I've got um, are my memories and my thoughts as in these recent years there really haven't been much tangible evidence there aren't any photos um, and there's no recordings I'm kind of sad about that but I don't have any recordings of her voice of course, I don't have recordings of other people's voices either. So I just have my memories of them, and that's been enough, I suppose. I remember what people sound like, but I, and it's like, do I really want recordings of what people are? It's like, I don't know. But it is already. I even checked a voicemail box, and I was like, did I delete everything already? And it's like, yes, I already deleted everything. So I don't even have like a voicemail sample. And at some point I would probably have accidentally have lost it and I would have felt bad about it. It's like, oh no, I lost that last bit. And it's like... <sighs> but life is very... mutable. You know, it's like changeable. It's very temporary. Life is the temporary condition in this state, this corporeal state, the dream of life manifest. And now the person that was my mom is in a different dream. So it's just a, just a body left I think her you know whatever disappears or goes away is gone or it's just awaiting its own permission to rest so I could probably ramble on and on and on and on and on for a while but I'm gonna keep this to 30 minutes Until next time.